Welcome back to Sunstar Games, the place to find new strategy games, and today we're gonna play Shoes of Rain. I hope that's how you read the name of the game. This is a game where you become the president of Swordland and you decide whether it's going to prosper or whether everyone is going to die. Because there's gonna be no in between. I'm either gonna make everybody super happy or everybody super miserable. <laughs> Those are my plans. Now, this is a very story focused game, and so grab a cup of coffee, relax, because there's gonna be a lot of story coming at you. So let's begin. Now in the demo it took almost 15 minutes just to create a, your character, so I'm kind of curious if this is going to be the same. You are my enslavement and my freedom. You are my flesh burning like a raw summer night. You are my country. Alright. All right, so this is the character creation. So it's gonna take us a little moment. This is important because this will kind of set up the event. So first of all, what happened in the history of Swordland, though that's mostly said, but what are sort of your positions and things like that. You open your eyes to this world you came from. A wealthy family, middle income family, or an impoverished family. We're gonna go with the wealthy family in the city of La Chalvin. Your parents named you Anton. As the only child of successful businessmen, you had the chance to grow up in a wealthy family. Life was easy at first and you had the best education money could afford. However, things inside the Rain family changed due to the absence of your father. This affected your mother and you negatively. The years passed. During a history class at school, the bell started to ring unexpectedly. You heard a loud commotion outside. As everyone tried to figure out what was going on, the principal announced the historic revolution. The kingdom was no more. The Republic of Swordland was born. I'm not gonna say we were worried. Like, we were well, well off when it was a kingdom, so I'm not sure how sure... I'm not, I don't know how rich we are, whether this affects us personally, so we're gonna just be worried about this. You don't know if you like that. Like, remember, we are the rich class, so we're not so sure about this. After graduating, you passed the university exam with high marks. You had the opportunity to choose between several studies. You chose... I chose economics. I have to fall, I have to make sure that my wealth will only increase. Could have also gone for law, though, but let's do economics. Economics at the last Chevin Business School. So we stayed at home with our mother as well. During the first year, he attended a lecture with David Vichy. He was a well-known diplomat from the foreign minister and the son of the president. Ooh, so maybe this is how we get the contacts. After observing the hall in silence, he explained why a market economy is the better option for solid line. He argued for a system where prices for goods and services are determined by the open market. What an outrage! <laughs> yeah, let's agree. Um, yeah, let's agree. Maybe we wanna, maybe we wanna be friendly with this professor. You know, maybe maybe this is how we get into politics, you know, gotta make friends. Soldiers entered- Whoa! This is like a turn of events. Soldiers entered the campus in the evening ahead of the first election. Many were in shock as the uniformed men created a security cordon and started arresting the teachers. My favorite teacher too? A group of students started gathering in protest along with your best friend P Peter Vector. You decided to- No, 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 no. We're gonna hide. No confrontation here. You heard a loud announcement that echoed through the campus. General Lutheran declared martial law in order to restore the administration. Please stand back and disperse to your rooms. Quickly made your way towards the dormitory, avoiding the scene. We did exactly as they said. We did. As you entered the room, you heard screams coming from the outside. Oh, we're gonna keep hiding. I'm just gonna be like, nope, I'm not gonna do this. But the scream echoed. It was a gloomy year. Yeah. Sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night wondering what would have happened if we had gone outside? Would we be able to help somebody or would things go badly? We don't know. The majority of the students and teachers displayed their opposition. As the Chavin became a target for the military regime, they didn't want to stay idle and decided to join a political debate group. The dozens of debates helped you hone your oratory skills while also helping you grow your network. Even though debates were pretty heated between different groups, you all grew from sharing ideas. In one of the meetings, Peter introduced you to one of his friends, Monica, who was a volunteer for the Swordish League of Women. You were immediately attracted to her... Ooh, intelligence, beauty, diligence. Let's go with intelligence. Just to be clear, I'm picking the... I'm, I'm trying to go with like this more of a rich, not really caring guy character, so I'm gonna try to keep the choices based on that. 
This is definitely not like what I think politically, but I think it's gonna be like a fun choice to play with. The political charge environment led you to join the socialist nationalist or stay away. How about we stay away? It's probably not gonna help us too much. Like we do want to move into politics eventually, but let's just let's just see where the kind of wind flows and then join that direction. We're gonna be a bit wishy-washy. The radio relayed that the communist general Eckert surrounded Lutheran and his troops demanding their surrender. Their first and heavy fighting broke out across the country. Just couldn't believe it. The army was fighting amongst themselves. Sordon plunged into chaos. The clashes escalated into a full-blown civil war. The horrors made you isolate yourself for a while. Monica helped you cope and love grew between the two of you. However, it was a difficult time for love. The chaos, the chaos must end. Charismatic colonel Tarkin Solo orchestrated a sudden coup and brought an end to the chaos. He wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as a savior. He formed the United Southern Party and ran as a presidential candidate in the first ever elections. Yeah, let's vote for him. He said we're gonna be wishy-washy, so it seems like he's winning, so we're gonna be like, hey man, totally on your side. USP won the election by a large majority. After graduation, you kept seeing Monica and noticed her interest to marry. However, a letter arrived from the military calling you to fulfill your compulsory service. It was time to serve your national duty. Let's go. A devastating civil war broke out in the neighboring country, Vehlen. The distinguished major Lo Lo Joseph, I guess? Joseph Lankia ordered you to lead your squad on a border patrol mission. It was very cold winter night when you began marching out of the German outpost. You could see your breath. After several hours of marching through the snowy hills, distant noises were heard. Visibility was too low to confirm the source. The squad crawled forward in formation and found a spot to observe. A group of refugees had made it beyond the border fence. You. So, I didn't my let them slip through in my test game. I think we're gonna escort them back this time. Yeah, we're gonna escort them back this time. We're gonna be a little mean. Like, a lot mean. Like, very mean. <laughs> the refugees were in despair when they realized that they were taking them back to the board. Yep, sorry. We were very loyal to our wishy-washy side that we chose. <laughs> Maybe we should work on our character development first, because like, we seem to be making very strange decisions. You know, we were stressed, we didn't know what to do, so we were like, we're just gonna follow orders. Screams and protests ensued as they were restrained, you delivered them to the border guards. After several months of military service, your duties ended and you went back to civilian life. That went pretty well, actually. I think if you choose the other one, it's gonna go worse for you, so this went pretty well. You and Monica decided to share your lives together. After receiving the blessing of her parents, a ceremony was held in Holsor. During the same year, you were offered a high-paying job at the governing United Swordland Party. It was important to start your career on a good foot, so you accepted it. Working for the ruling party was the easiest path to power. The financial compensation was too great to pass up. It was the best opportunity to change the country. Yeah, we all we care about money. So financial comp compensation. You became the economics assistant of, to one of the more experienced members of assembly. You worked long and hard, staying late at work, investigating hundreds of pages of economic reports. You were climbing the ladder. So, threatened the republic by removing the institutions and symbols of the former kingdom from society. Things were also looking up for the country as the massive economic boom continued and people were the happiest they had been in a decade. Election time came and it was decided. President Tarkin Sol was elected once more. Okay, that's great, we picked a good side then. The new five-year plan and the subsequent work regarding finances put you under a lot of pressure. But your significant contribution to the economic strategy triggered an invitation to meet President Tarkin Sal himself, who offered you a key position. You were to become the youngest member of assembly. Of course, let's do this thing. We accept it right away. As the youngest MP, it was difficult to connect with the influential inner circle. You needed allies, so you brought Peter as your right-hand man. The birth of your son, Frank, provided you a brief moment of joy and relief. We sacrificed work to spend time with family or sacrifice family to improve your position in the party. I think we're gonna sacrifice work simply because we grew up without a father, so presumably we value family and we value the time that we had with him before he passed away. So we're gonna be like, I don't wanna be gone from my son. 
During your absence, Peter found trustworthy contacts and strengthened your position in the party. At the same time, President Sol increased his authority over the East. His growing ego started to go astray within the party. The cracks begin to show. Maybe it's time to switch sides. Remember, we're wishy-washy. President Sol barely secured a majority in the election against the opposition leader. Over the past year, people were growing discontent with the corruption and the worsening quality of life. Meanwhile, calls for a United Sorland Party Congress became louder as the leadership struggle started to brew. We... Hmm... So it seems like the opposition's gonna win, so we're just gonna straight up join the opposition. We could watch from the sign lines, kinda wait till it's more decided? Which I guess would be more- let's do that, it's gonna be more more in tune with our character. The contender for party leadership was Evald Alfonso, a reformist and talented business magnate with a growing popularity within the party. Meanwhile, in a desperate effort to secure votes before the Congress, President Sol was meeting party members one by one. He approached you too. The president offered you the position of Minister of Economy, Commerce and Energy in the next government if you backed him in the upcoming one. Alright, let's do this then. That's too good to pass up. The party congress was nothing short of impressive. The men of United Sodland were decorating every possible spot. Thousands of influential political figures, lobbyists and benefactors gathered from this turning point. The voting for the leadership began. So actually, I know how it went from my test game. And I don't think you can change that. I think that's kind of like fixed part of the story, and that is that um, a vault is gonna win. But we're gonna try to see whether actually there is a way we could maybe get Tarkin Sol to win. So we're gonna vote for Tarkin Sol and just kind of see because he, I mean, he said I can be Minister of Economy. Come on. That, that seems like a great way to get more money. I, I mean, unfortunately, so lost. Yeah, okay, so it so didn't change. Never mind. Unfortunately, so lost the leadership vote to Alfon and Sondo with a small margin. During the Congress, Sol announced his retirement from politics. The systems he had established were to stay much longer. His achievement wouldn't be forgotten. You. Well, I was definitely troubled because I was supposed to get a great job. Now I'm going to get nothing. How dare you lose, man? I was counting on you. Could have joined the other guy. A month later, your daughter was born. Monica named her Dina. She motivated you during a tumultuous period in the party. Yeah, I was very upset. The general elections were approaching. The United Swordland Party was under the new leadership of Evald Alfonso. You... I guess we're gonna help him now. I mean, I just want a good position. I don't really care who wins. During the general elections, the main opposition leader was embroiled in a scandal with the secretary diminishing their chances. The extensive privatization program proposed by Evald Alfonso secured an election victory for the United Southern Party. Over the next year, you tried all that was necessary to climb up the ladder. We don't really care about whether Southern is a better place. I just want to make my money. That's just how we roll. The presidency of Evald Alfonso saw a many bolts reforms, but was followed by a serious economic recessions. The other parties announced their bids for the 1953 election, but the unfair system hampered all opposition's efforts to win. You thought that your party could not survive in a crisis, were worried about the economic recession, worried that your reputation would be tarnished along Alfonso. I well, it wasn't really all that, but I was a little bit on his side. Um, we're gonna worry about the economic recession, because it's not good for our money either. Together with Peter and your president, the USP grew and you became the face of a new wing in the party. You effectively took over the leadership as President Alfonso lost control of the country. Finally! The moment to make a, to make a move had come. You blamed Alfonso for the crisis on television, bribed and extorted Alfonso's inner circle, advised Alfonso to step down. Mm, we... I mean, at this point, if we have took over the leadership, and we know he's gonna be gone. You want to look strong in the eyes of the people? Because then, like, look, we want to cover up that we don't really care, that we just want to make our own money and that we're very wishy-washy, so maybe we're gonna go the opposite and blame him on television, so it seems like we have a strong stance, even though we couldn't care less. Let's do that. The media backlash prompted President Alfonso to reshuffle his cabinet, but most of his inner circle abandoned him. The party eventually voted you in because of your charisma as a leader. See, that worked out perfectly. Following this, he announced that you would be running for president in the general election with Peter as your running mate. It was your turn. I appreciate that Peter s stood by me. After visiting every city and town during the campaign, you made a speech on state television. You promised to uh, preserve national and act democratic reforms. Um... What would our character choose? So if you're a rich guy who doesn't really care about anything except making more money... Uh... Let's 
go with... This is a hard decision. I I'm gonna go with preserve national values. Let's just go all the way. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be terrible. Again, I wanna reiterate, this is not my opinion. <laughs> it's just character I chose, so we're sticking with it. Great nation of Swordland. Due to the incompetent leadership, enemies of both internal and external are influencing our glorious nation. Today more than ever, we need to unite under one flag, my flag, and protect our values. Grassy Swordland. The broadcast ended. Yes, everybody follow me. On election day, millions went out to cast their votes. It was time to face the truth. Yeah, pick me, please. Chapter 1. President Rain. It'd be so funny if the game was like, You lose, let's make the character again. We're like, uh. <laughs> they didn't vote for you, you were too wishy-washy. Go away. Alright, so this is where the game actually begins. As Anton Rain, you have made many- obviously we won't, just to be clear. You have made many promises to the people of Sodor in order to gain their votes. They must be considered very carefully. So, you have these options and we need to make the promises and we need to fulfill them and other people are going to be unhappy and will not vote for us next time. Sodor's economy had been based on a planned doctrine since the formation until the former president, Evald Anfalso, enacted free market reforms. Now the country finds itself in between two different economic systems, free market or planned economy. In diplomacy, we can align with West, East, or neither. We'll do definitely neither, because remember, we're wishy-washy. Immigration... In recent years, Bloodish, Hedzik, and Agnolian immigrants flocked to the soil due to relaxed immigration laws enacted by Evald and Falso. As a result, tensions in between sorts and immigrants have been increasing. Um... I think we're gonna keep the immigration relaxed. We don't really care. Uh, we're gonna do... Which one of these is gonna make us more money? I think... Oh, we did say national values. I, I don't know. Let, let's do... We should have gone democratic if we get the free market. Let's do the free market just, just for fun. I don't really know which one would have been better. Um, we've also promised to focus on certain extensive subjects within our first term. The people expect us to solve the negative situation within this topic while providing an overall improvement to related policies. We care about... Oh, we don't have money as an option? Health. The difference of service quality between urban and rural hospitals has been getting increasingly worse. Education? Law and enforcement or military. Let's promise education because we, I think we, we, we value education. We had a really good education in our life, so we definitely value education. Education, we could also do health is also not bad. Uh, but I think we're gonna stick to, we can only pick one, right? Yeah, we're gonna go to education, I think. We will promise to have a good education. Now, on the left top, you can see our total economy, we're kind of halfway through our budget, government, and our wealth, our personal wealth. Over here, we can see the country overview. We can see all of our current active po uh, policies. For example, we can see that we have uh, an option that president may veto bills or um, we appoint ministers of the councils of ministers from elected members of the assembly and so on. Here we can see our current situations, for example, we had a court, court backlog, or we have uh, limited women's rights, so that's not great. Again, not, not, I'm not sure if we care, like our character probably doesn't care, but you know. Uh, we have bad human rights? What's up here? Some human rights are respected, albeit violations still exist due to the extensive law enforcement power, so that's not great either. We have freedom of the press though, so that's pretty cool. Now, here we can see the same thing about our economy, so this is definitely something we want to focus on. So our only active policy is... Alphonse on a mix? Okay. Sodland's economy had been based on a planned doctrine since formation until the former president, Edward Alfonso, enacted free market reforms. Now the country finds itself between the two different systems, and we can see current situation. For example, we have a very high unemployment, so we might want to make decisions that allow us to give people jobs. Like, as you're going to see in a moment, we're going to have an option to start b uh, sort of building new roads or something like that. So that would be definitely good because that's going to give people jobs. So that's something you might want do. Then we can go over military, welfare, order, and diplomacy. Okay. And next we can see here a political overview. So we can see our cabinet, factions, old guard, oligarchs, and reformists. Uh, the key figure in that specific uh, faction. I'm not sure where we can see how much they like us. 
uh, maybe later. Here we can see the seats in the government, so most of you have USP and a little bit of PFJP and NFP. So this is People's Freedom and Justice Party, is a political party which has promoted liberalism and democracy. So they should... I mean, I gave you the free market, so I... <laughs> Not sure how happy they'll be about that, we'll see. And this is na nationalist. Well, I, I promised that I'm a nationalist, so we should be appeasing everybody. So this went well. We, we did well with our wishy-washy instructions. We have a speaker of the Grand Assembly, Gloria, and here we have the leaders of the different assembly, and here we can see our judiciary. We have uh, five seats in the old guards, three centers and three reformists, and again we can see the leaders. Here we can have our notes, so we can write down notes. This is pretty important because the game is very like story heavy, so we could set up our own notes. So here we've got our little bit, our little land, and um, here we can see some options. So. For example, if you were to click here, we could read the report from Agnolia. Congratulations from PM Van Horten. So it's from some of the other countries. It wants us to go here. Okay. Uh, congratulations from Chancellor Hegel from Valksland. Uh, can we not do this? Not yet. Okay. So in the, in the demo, you were, you were able to immediately enact something, which is what I wanted to do. But it seems like we have to go... Do we have to click on this? Because this is gonna take a while. Fine, I guess we'll get the congratulations. We get a Prime Minister congratulated on our election and praised our party's stance and just, on just and transparent elections. He signaled he wishes to continue to trade partnership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. Oh, we can read more here. Avangas is an influential country located off the east coast across the Marken Sea. It is an island nation and a major naval power to be reckoned with. Okay. Uh, give me your congratulations, thank you. Uh, I guess a couple more people want to congratulate us, so we're just gonna click over this so that we can get to making some decisions. Okay, two weeks have passed since we won the election, and now I was about to be sworn as the fourth president of Sorland. Thousands were watching in the inauguration ceremony and cheering my name, Anton. The die was cast, and there my story began. In the distance, the Marin Palace stood on top of the famous Hill of Pride. I had no way of knowing what future awaited me here. I looked at my family, my son and daughter, and my wife, and I turned towards the key people who made it all possible. Uh, or Sahakia, so we could actually click on them to kind of read like additional info over here. Uh, the time for the oath has come. I'm ready. Please repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will respectfully execute the office of the President of Swordland and to the best of my ability preserve, protect and defend uh, the people and the Constitution. You may now deliver your integration speech, Mr. President. Thank you. Dear citizens of Swordland. Oh, let's go, my fellow swords. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny. Uh... Let's talk about change and hope. You, the people, have chosen. Together we will bring prosperity and reform to our nation. It is a time of hope. It is a time of change. Uh, let's talk about our capabilities. Our workers are no less productive than a decade ago. Our capable minds are no less inventive. Our products and services no less requested than they were last week, last month, or last year. We will stop the recession and eliminate poverty. The future awaits certain is above all in the world. First, we must rewrite our work on constitution. Uh, we will stop the recession and eliminate poverty. Let's do that. Uh, we will change now, not in, the, not in the next decade or years, today. Okay. Hundreds of thousand cheers, they were shouting my name in unison. I felt the responsibility, the power and the burden all at the same time. We're gonna wave. I took a long look at the people of Sodom to burn this moment into my memory. One of the presidential guards came by to notify it was time to leave. I made my way to the leading car to the motorcade and walked away. Hello, Mr. President. Sound of the effect of the speech I made hearing my new title made me smile. If you allow me to introduce myself, I'm Serge, new, your new driver. Yeah, okay. Driver's not that important. Let's just keep moving, okay? Yes, I get a driver. Let's go. Uh, the Marin Palace is apparently very beautiful. Um, let's go with... It's in good hands now. I'm sure of that, Mr. President. Right, let's, let's walk out. Goodbye. I want to start making decisions. <laughs> All right, now we can make decisions. So here we could read the report from Hosea about logistical issues or general staff gathers. We could also have a briefing on the political or economic situation. 
or here we could for example read the report part of last one loses importance so this is going to allow you to make different decisions like you can read this like for example we can read about the lack of investments in ivory and then we're going to be making like economic situation is going to give us an option to go and build stuff there we're going to however go talk about the logistical issues the may of also supported the rising population and fast urban expansion has resulted in high level of congestion in the city traffic. The logistic report underlined increased traffic and slow transportation. The mayor also reported that the absence of well-designed large land-based logistics center where all transporters come together is one of the greatest problems. So presumably, not yet. But let me check this one as well. The latest marine traffic report showed that the port of Washington is no longer the busiest of America the continent, falling behind to the third position. While it's a negative indicator for administration, Lycoman still has potential to shine again. Okay, and here we've got what? Lack of investment. The mayor of Arvey reports a lack of adequate infrastructure. Okay, so definitely we need to build a lot of infrastructure. So, I think if you're going to talk about our economic situation, we will be able to actually enact that. So let's try that out. Girls, do you really think that such an economically advanced area is more in need of investment than Angland? So we can see they're going to be arguing about which, which area needs to have the investments. And then we can kind of like read about it and decide for our own. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. President. Uh, good morning, everyone. How are you? Oh, I can... Uh, I'm very well unmotivated. Uh, it seems our ministers are feeling the same. I can clearly see that. What is the discussion about? We were having a discussion about the infrastructure plans. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. We will get there, girls. No rush. First, I'd like to conduct my economic presentation. Um, no, I want to know what he has to say. Of course, Mr. President. So I have some very good construction companies willing to take government contracts in the Greater Halsford and Gelson regions. And again, we could click and we could read like the Great Halsford is the second largest and Gelson is the smallest region. Okay. This would boost the rural economy. I think it would be wise to pick investments that will go through these regions. Yes, let's do that immediately. Okay, she got in, he got interrupted. Vice idea of her main agenda is to make money instead of developing the region serving people. Yes, that's exactly what's my agenda. Watch your tone. Pardon me, Mr. President. I just want the best for the city of Arbor and the Anglin region in general. So yeah, so here we could essentially decide, okay, maybe maybe it's not like these two that need the investment, maybe it's Angland. Um, we're just gonna ask uh, Simon for what well, first. I just want to get to a point where I actually make a decision. That's why I'm gonna go through this this quickly. Obviously, if you played yourself, you're gonna read it and take your time. But we're already kind of over time, and I'm gonna make a decision before we leave end the episode. Simon. I've told that I uh, agree with both of them. Angler is in need of investment. We can improve Greater Holzhard and Gelsland. I want to avoid this topic now since we'll talk about it in the future. I'd rather first fully brief an economic situation. Okay, so they assign the situation. Um, someone came in, so we just like... That's your... <laughs> Mr. First, I'm about to explain some very serious data. Yeah, well, maybe you should hurry up then. There have been some developments about the Swedish rand losing further value today. We have been trying to stabilize it with Central Bank. The recession of 51 put enormous pressure on the economy, resulting in the collapse of the value of our currency. Well, that's bad. The entire situation was a significant cause for concern for our administration. Since economic is your forte, Mr. And it's possible that you might have already been aware of the data. I can still explain the current economic situation in better detail. No, you're fine. Let's just get a move on. What is our unemployment? I just want to get to my decision. <laughs> unemployment is counted and is now at staggering 16 But see, so maybe building things is going to help with that. Just inflation is at 7%. That's also not great. Unemployment is increasing crime and drug use. We need to get people off the streets. The inflation isn't helping our greatest citizen either. I know. I have all the information. Let's move. On. As you can see, the situation is alarming, but not everything is negative. The extensive privatization program of Alfonso left us a large budget surplus, which we can use to stabilize the crisis. The primary subjects we need to settle on is what the general path we will take in our term. Solonomics based nationalism happened in the 30s, and Alfonso's privatization began during the end of 40s. What will our administration focus on? One of our main promises was to promote a free market economy. To be frank, I believe it is the only way of the recession. Okay, we're gonna do that. She doesn't support it. Uh, Gus is kind of like, okay. Let's do. Um, women in 20th is thriving because of the rule of supply and demand. Yes. 
Agreed. Look at how quickly the spear and cursor have increased their prestige by impressing these basic principles. Sodan has the potential to do so as well. Why don't we take our potential seriously? Okay, again, just let me make my decisions. Um... Sodan will not be controlled by any nations. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. It's not really what we promised at the beginning, but I wanted to get to a point where we can actually choose the the free economy. Let's finish with the monster start with the capital swing market reform. The spot was going to enrich Sodan. Yes, that is what we promised to do, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, the recession was the direct result of his free market reforms. Yes, that is probably true. Uh, would a free market focus bring us stronger allies? It would make Arcasia look at our country in a more positive light. They are proponents of the free market economy. Okay, let's move on. What are my final thoughts? A market economy doesn't require as much guidance and could help us attract foreign. Uh, capital... Yes. Market economy, go. We will promote a free market economy. I can't say that I agree with this. Too bad, I'm the president, honey. <laughs> this is not gonna go for you well. Now that there is a clarity in which direction we're heading, I will work on a good plan accordingly. Great. This concludes our meeting. Fantastic. In our next gathering, we'll talk about the upcoming infrastructure investment plan. Okay, so... Can we choose... Yeah. Invest in megastructure. Decision to invest in one of the two planned mega infrastructure projects. So we're gonna do that. It's gonna cost us our budget. But first, let's check the country overview. If we jump here to economy, we can see that we... Actually, we're promoting a market economy system and avoiding advising businesses to shift towards this gold. All right, let's go here. We can also have information in our journal about our first turn. So we have one and we made a decision to promote the first market. We're also going to invest into whatever. Okay, the Minister of Economy has put forward two bold plans for mega infrastructure projects that would help with the economic recession in the long term. Investing in projects of this scale will take up some portion of our budget but could prove worthwhile to accomplish. So we're gonna definitely invest, so we're gonna get our budget down to two. Okay, and now we have to discuss which one. You could also read the news, by the way. Swordline today, economic meeting held, Pre and information about our president. Okay. So, let's make the decision. I know we haven't really read what are the options on the decision too much, but again, I just want to show you what it looks like we made the full decision. So, Mr. President, Mr. President, we need to focus on boosting the economy as quickly as possible. And the fastest way is to infrastructure projects. Okay. On the one hand, businessmen are complaining about the slow logistic rail entry between Hozart and La Caven. Uh, on the other hand, citizens are criticizing the lack of proper highway connection between Lacan and Arvory. Narrow roads by the seaside are not only dangerous, but also difficult to traverse. So I think dangerous take precedence over just slow. So we'll go with the... Um, actually, or we could pick the most profitable option for the economic girls as well. Let's do that. Again, we mostly just care <laughs> about money. <laughs> Which is obviously connecting our two most economically powered cities. Actually, I don't know. No, that's a good point, but actually, yeah, maybe I want to choose something else anyway. It's not the business people that suffer, but the ordinary folk. What really matters, though, is that we can accomplish something tangible in our first economic act. Uh, we must prove our administrative capabilities. The people must know that this understanding can get things done. We must improve the economy. Let's improve the economy. Therefore, I define two important projects for attention. The H3 Highway Project and the L1 High Speed Railway Project. The ministry can only support one project at a time with the current capacity and, and budget. Let's move to the details of each. So which one do you want to hear about first? Talk to me about the highway. The highway aims to improve the abysmal state of the road network in the Anglian region bordering Agnolia. The area is home to several million Agno Sordish and Sordish people who feel neglected. There are no proper highway connections to and from Anglian. The mayor of Arvor Eric Neal has been asking for a bigger budget to develop the regional infrastructure. He told us that even trucks are having a hard time traveling through the main roads. Okay, so apparently everybody seems to like the highway. Um, yeah, that must be bad for the citizens. I'll look at the map. Okay. The highway starts at here and leads to Langkirk. Okay. And then goes to Arbery up here. Langkirk, Arbery. Okay. As a result, the road network towards Angry Capital will improve substantially. I saw the central government continuously neglect the agno dominated regions when I was a mayor. Is this administration going to continue this kind of negligence? Yeah, let's make them respected like all of us. 
Just to be pointed out that the highway would be less beneficial in the near term. I have I have to this decade to increase the speed of transportation throughout the region. Our citizens will be quite pleased if we successfully accomplish this. Uh, yeah, I've decided. Can I decide without <laughs> reading about the other options? We're gonna do the highway. Project to improve the infrastructure in our poorer regions? It's not really gonna... Okay, so this other one is clearly the one that's gonna connect the cities, but uh, we're gonna do this one. We're gonna do the highway. Make people happy. Thank God, I knew that he would see reason. <laughs> like how happy she is. We only kind of chose like the other thing when she was upset, so we're gonna go for her this time. The negotiations will begin. The negotiations will begin in the middle of this year. We'll be able to award the contract to a corporation of your choice. The ministry estimates that the entire construction will finish in two years if every step going forward is executed successfully. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. Now, is there gonna be news about it? Oh, country overview updated. So we should be able to see... Yeah, we have the highway here, so we're going to be working on the highway. And eventually it's going to get built over this way. We could get a report, I guess, about how it's going, presumably. Is there anything in the news about... Not yet. Not yet, okay. Alright, so could we... How do we move towards the next... I guess maybe like getting, uh, we'd have to finish all the briefings, so let's just read this report here, see how it goes. The recent collapse of the tourism industry in Lankert has led to a reduction in trade traffic and road maintenance. Okay, so this is information before we made the decision, okay, so we could have read about it. Well, I think this is actually a good time to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, write on the comment and you can click on the right to watch some, to watch Texture Inc. and some other games that we played on this channel. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.